Hi, I am just letting you know that I'm recording this because we had a really great conversation today and I realized that you missed out on it. So I wanted to kind of catch up on what we have had happen in class today on Tuesday, December 8th. So I'm gonna start off with uh, the screen, which is um, these four links are things that we use today. You don't need, of course, Zoom, but we started off with the snowflake challenge. Uh, then we went to perimeter challenges, which is what we were working on yesterday. We finished with area strategies. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things, but we're gonna spend a little bit of time on this perimeter challenge so you can hopefully get unstuck where a lot of classmates had been stuck on Monday when we finished. If you click on Snowflake Challenge, this is really just for fun, but you will see here some of the artwork created by your classmates. And um, today we get to play with a little bit of color. You see they're all different colors. So um, I hope you enjoy playing with that and just having a little bit of a break from some of the schoolwork and that you can enjoy um, shading it a color that you like. Take a look at what your classmates done. They're pretty cool. Uh, but I want us to go to this. Yesterday we finished um, with some people in the chat letting me know towards the end of class where their frustrations and confusion was on this calculating the perimeter. So um, I actually went and tried to act like a student yesterday. I often do these Desmos slides where I do um, the activity before I ever share them with you. Uh, this one, I, I scanned through the slides, but I didn't actually calculate this. I just thought about how I would have done it. And I'll talk to you how I would have done it in a minute. But what I wanted to show you is how some of your classmates did it. Uh, because when we have a figure like this, where there's circles, and we're being asked to find the perimeter, what we're going to have to do is find circumference. But then there's also some straight edges here. And this is Arish. He found this rectangle in the middle, and then he was calculating the semicircles and using the fact that they are, these semicircles are connected to this square and the square and the square. He had a pretty, um, he had a hard time kind of putting into words what he had done, but as you can tell from his green check mark, he got it right. So I thought this was just an interesting way. I hadn't thought about taking the center out. I solved it a different way, and I, I really enjoy seeing the way different people think. Uh, this is Juwan and Angeline, and this was the closest to the way I originally thought about it. I also saw that there was a square in the center. Um, and you notice what Juwan's doing here. She's like checked off these areas and is leaving this space open because she knows she has to count that as part of the perimeter. Versus Angeline just like blocked off this whole area to show I have the square in the center and then she started calculating what the outside regions were. Um, and she's counting how many squares there were and ended up with uh, the check mark, which shows that all of her calculations are not apparent here. But you can see that they both had a 20 here and a 20 here on, on Jawan's. Um, we'll get to in a second what that, that means. It does have to do with this 10 centimeters and what we know about how to calculate circumference of a circle from our work last week. Uh, this was Ezra. Honestly, I thought Ezra's looked like a piece of art. Nice and neat. Um, Ezra's got a point on each edge of the square that has to be counted in the perimeter and has used the line to mark off the part of the square that is not part of the perimeter. So you can just kind of clearly follow these dots around the outside edge and you see where the perimeter is. Um, Ezra hadn't finished yet, that's why you don't see a check mark, because if you remember I paused it when some people were still working on this yesterday. Um, but you can see the idea here, Ezra was going to, Ezra was going to do similar to what I was doing, which I was thinking three-fourths of a circle and that there are four of them, and then I was going to put my fractions together and then add these four pieces. So this is much prettier than mine would have looked, but it's similar to what I was thinking about. Unlike these two, where I think their calculations were easier than what I would have thought of, because they figured out this is a half and this is a half, and that's a whole circle there. Another whole circle here, and then they have one, two, three, four. So there's three whole circles, which is such a smart way of thinking about it. And then finally, this was Elaine. 
Elaine said she wanted to complete those circles and really think about them as whole circles. And she used that in her calculations, um, recognizing that that meant that this wasn't a full square in the middle. And she did do, she kind of explained it and I, I can't use her words, but how she took those partials. So I wanted you to first see that as a version of um, one shape that's being looked at in so many different ways by your classmates. But what we do when we have a form like that, that is not in um, a basic shape, we do need to break it up. So I'm gonna switch over to my iPad so I can do a little bit of writing here. It is sinking right now. So there we go. Um, here is that shape. And I wanna just remember some things that we know. We know that in order to find the circumference, we do pi times the diameter. This is telling us here that one square across on this grid is 10. That means the diameter here is 20. So we're gonna do pi times 20 to get the circumference of this whole circle. But if you recall, some people were figuring out what half a circle was. And saying things like, well, these two make one circle. These two make one circle. And then these four pieces make the other part of that circle. So there's three full circles. Now we spent a little bit of time with um, Aiden really explaining how he did it mathematically. And um, I'm gonna copy down the equation that Aiden used. It looks a little bit complex, but I wanna talk you through it. So first Aiden thought 20 times 3.14. Well, we just saw that. We know where 20 times 3.14 comes from. It comes from taking one of these circles and saying that's 20 and this is pi. So that's gonna give me the circumference of a circle. But then Aiden got really fancy with this. Sorry, that's kind of messy. Let me see if I can fix that. and Aiden divided by four, which I thought was really smart because what Aiden was doing with that divided by four was saying, well, each of these circles has a fourth of it gone. So he's figuring, well, <clears throat> if I figured out <clears throat> what a whole circle was, and then I divided it by a fourth, that's gonna give me this circumference right here. If that makes sense. And then he multiplied that by three. Because in each circle, there were three pieces left. And how many of those circles had those three pieces left that were part of the perimeter or the circumference? <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why that switched back. Well, <clears throat> he then multiplied by four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because there's three parts of each circle that we're calculating as part of the perimeter and there's four of them. And then he added 40. And you might be thinking, where in the world did 40 come from? This is 10, 20, 30, 40. So if you take all of that together, you get the entire circumference of those partial circles and the perimeter of the pieces of that square that make it to the outside, 
And when you calculate this entire equation, you end up with something that needs to be rounded. And it's about 228.4, 228.5. So um, that kind of captures the conversation. To be honest, I um, then move people on to the next activity. I will tell you that uh, we opened up this um, entire perimeter challenge. So those of you who hadn't finished can go back and finish it. And I know that uh, you both had made some good progress on it. Those of you who I'm, I'm recording this for, but you might go back and fix some mistakes and complete it if you haven't. And then finally, we added, went to this area strategies and we spent probably a good 10 to 15 minutes on this warm up. Because a lot of people looked at these two shapes and they were deciding which shaded region is longer. And I'll be honest with you, a good portion of your class first picked they're the same. And then they needed to move into the next space and they did go and work. First they tried on their own and then they worked with a, a breakout room to determine the area of figure B. And there were quite a few different ways. Some people broke this up into Again, similar to what we were just talking about, they found a square in the middle. And then they knew that that meant that this triangle and this triangle made another square and this triangle and this triangle could go together and they found the area that way. Let me go and show you some of the drawings from your classmates that might help. So this Asenith right here did a really um, similar job to what I just did. Others um, counted, like you see here with Matthew, he's using the grid and the dots to try to calculate. And so there were quite a few different ways that people did this. And then I saw quite a few people going back to screen one and changing their answers. So um, just think about that as you're calculating these, you can go back and forth and that's true going on. Now, I know that you're seeing this because you uh, were not able to view this in class and don't stress they didn't finish this. Um, most people got to around screen five, six. I had a couple questions on seven and I challenged people to try to get to eight before we join up together tomorrow. If you can get nine, 10, 11 done as well, that's great. But um, if you're pressed for time um, or you're just trying to be caught up with us, you can get to slide eight and you'll be ready to start the conversation tomorrow. So I hope that helps. And I am going to um, be watching to see if you have any questions. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye.